Welcome to episode three of VR Roundtable. I am one of your hosts, Anthony, and I'm also joined by Gary. Gary, what's going on, man? Uh, not too much, really. Um, a few problems with my Vive controller last week, but uh, I won't bore you with those at the moment. Maybe we will let you know about that next time. But uh, we've got a lot to discuss this episode. So, uh, yeah, what, how about you, your end? What, what you got going on? Uh, not a hell of a lot. I, I already have a half broken Vive controller, so I've been dealing with that. But just buying a new one, it's so expensive. So it's like, ugh, I, I, I might actually open it up and try to do a repair, even though it will kill the warranty. But I don't know, because it tracks, but then every once in a while it just starts drifting. And so it's kind of about 70% of uh, its effectiveness. So I can still use it, but it is it is uh, annoying to be sure. But um, this week, one thing I do want to say to our listeners out there, because me and Gary, we are both big on the HTC Vive. And, you know, I started off with a Vive cast and, you know, HTC Vive, HTC Vive. But this week, we're probably not going to get into much HTC Vive stuff. So if somebody's tuning in right now and you really want to hear a ton about HTC Vive, you might be a little bit disappointed. But if you have any interest whatsoever in PlayStation VR or in Oculus with the Oculus Connect that recently happened, we have news this... I mean, we have overflowing news. Sometimes... Me and Gary get together and we're going to do a show and we might kind of struggle with what we're going to talk about. But this week we have no struggles. There is a, you know, just an overflowing amount of news to talk about in both of those two categories. So we're going to kind of dedicate the show to those two major topics and we'll just take it from there. Okay, so... When it comes to PlayStation VR, I mean, what is the big deal? Why is there big news about PlayStation VR? Well, what happened this week is an embargo was lifted on PlayStation VR. And so you have all these different outlets around the internet. You have Engadget, you have The Verge, um, Polygon, uh, Wire, just, you know, Giant Bomb, GameSpot. IGN, everybody basically did a review of PlayStation VR, of the hardware, and of an initial batch of software. And um, these outlets have had their PSVRs for maybe two weeks, 10 days, or whatever. Sony started sending out the shipments to these uh, outlets. Of course, they didn't send one to me or you, you know, but... Yeah. Um, we're a little too small for that right now, but maybe eventually they'll hook us up. But uh, <laughs> but um, they've been sending it out to everybody, and so they've been trying it out. And then on a on a specific date, um, all hell broke loose, you know. And everybody started doing their live streams, and we had all the reviews. And there's a ton of ton of stuff to talk about with that. But before we get into that, real quick, one thing I do want to say: I think there were two little Debbie Downer situations that kind of happened right before this embargo dropped. I might be getting my timeline mixed up a little bit, but I think this happened before the embargo. But I don't know if you heard about this, Gary, but one of the stories that came out was this story about HDR, high dynamic range, and the little PSVR breakout box. You know, you get a little... One thing about PSVR, and we'll get into this, of course, is wires, wires everywhere. I mean, it's like, wow, all these things just have wires going everywhere. But there is a breakout box, and basically the HDMI from your PS4 goes into the breakout box, and then there's an HDMI from the breakout box that goes to your TV. And then there's also one that I guess goes to the headset, of course. And the one that goes to your TV, what we found out is it cannot pass HDR. It can pass 4K, but it can't pass HDR. And okay. so the big hubbub about all of this is if you happen to be one of the, 
the people out there that might be looking for the PS4 Pro, and if you have a 4K TV that does HDR, which not a lot of us have that. I actually have a 4K TV, but it doesn't do HDR. But if you did have that, this is going to be a major irritant basically it's going to be a it's going to be one of those things that's just like an annoyance you know because what you're going to have to do if you want to play um horizon zero dawn you know you're in february you want to play horizon zero dawn and you got hdr but you got your ps psvr all set up as well you actually are going to need to have like an extra little splitter um or you're going to have to manually get up unplug a cable, plug a different cable, because it doesn't do HDR, you know, so you will not get that. Did you hear about that story? I didn't, know. I missed that one, and that completely passed me by. This is the first I'm hearing about it, actually. It's an odd situation, because um, if they're pushing the PS4 Pro, and they've got this problem coming out just just now, just at the launch of uh, PlayStation VR, yeah, it's not, it's not good for them, I guess. Again, I, I don't know if I'm absolutely 100% locked in with this timeline, but I really think that they kind of snuck these two little bugaboo situations out before the embargo. And then so then the next day it was the embargo. So all that kind of got buried, but there was a discussion on NeoGAF and some other different websites about all this HDR stuff. Now for me personally, it's not going to be a problem for me because my TV doesn't have HDR it will pass 4K, so I don't have to worry about it. But if I ever did get an HDR display, then I got to figure out, you know, am I going to use some little splitter thing? Uh, or am I just going to get up and keep swapping the HDMI cables every time I want to play a game on the TV? Um, so it's, it's one of these annoyances. And one thing I'll say is, like, you would expect Sony... I mean, come on, Sony makes 4K TVs. They, you know, they're all about HDR as a company. In fact, I recently was driving to work and I heard a commercial on the radio and it was about Sony TVs and they were talking about 4K and how everything will be so beautiful. And they're really into this 4K thing and you would think their engineers would be like, well, we got to make sure that it passes the HDR as well because we don't want people to have a major issue with this. But yeah. somehow, somewhere along the way, the ball got dropped, you know? Yeah, I wonder what the difference in price would be for them to add that kind of connection onto the breakout box if it's significant price increase for some reason. And, you know, this PlayStation VR has probably been in production for quite a while now to get the numbers that they need for the launch. So maybe it was something to do with the fact that they sort of set in stone the, the specification for the breakout box months and months ago and it's only recently really we're hearing about all this this uh, news about hdr and everybody's jumping on this hdr bandwagon but <clears throat> then again on the other side of that they must have been aware that they were bringing out a ps4 pro so which is primarily to do with all this hdr business <clears throat> so um yeah it's, it just seems like an odd decision for them not to support that yeah, it's kind of weird. Sony is a hardware company, and I remember back to the days of the PlayStation 3. I had a 1080i TV back in the PlayStation 3 days, and I don't know if you remember this, but the PlayStation 3, they didn't have a scaler. There wasn't a chip in there that would scale. It wouldn't take 720p and scale it to 1080i. So, if you had one of these TVs, this is a long time ago, but if you had one of these TVs that did 480p and 1080i, but it didn't do 720p, you were kind of boned and it really sucked. I remember those early days because there would be 720p games and I'd be like, damn, I can't play it on my 1080, you know, it looks like crap. And Sony, once again, it's a hardware company. They got engineers coming out of their ears it's like, why didn't they think of this little $5 chip that could scale the video, you know? And, and Xbox 360 had the little chip. But, uh, but anyway, that's, that's a whole other story. But one other little bugaboo that came out right before the embargo dropped was this news about wireless headphones. Did you hear about this one? Now, what the news came out was is 
you cannot use, well, you can use wireless headphones with PSVR, but you will not get the, the full 3D audio. It will not work. You have to use wired headphones. This was another little thing that hit, and there was a little bit of moaning and groaning, you know, from the gamers out there. Did you hear about that one? Yeah, I did hear about this one, and I guess it comes from the fact that the the wireless um, headsets they're going to be connected to the PS4 directly through some kind of USB dongle, and in order to get the 3D audio, it has to really go through the PSVR system in some way, um, in order to so it's getting the position of your head and, and things like that. But yeah, it's, <clears throat> I, I did hear about this, and. I, I, it doesn't, I mean, I don't think that's, it's not a major issue. I guess for some people who were expecting to use headphones like these with it, um, it could be a problem, yeah. Yeah, I saw your headphones there and I'm like, I'm pretty sure Gary uses wire, wireless headphones. And there's people out there that have like $200 headphones, you know, and they're wireless and they use them for everything. And so for those people, this is a bit of a Debbie Downer, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, for me, I normally use wired headphones. Now, these headphones here, these Sennheiser ones, I have like a super long cord. But what I did was when I got my Vive, I ordered this like super short cord that is really short and then it just connects to the Vive. And so I don't have a long cord dangling everywhere. So I'm hoping I can do the exact same thing with PSVR because you do get this little, there's a little white, you know, remote thing that does the power and the volume and stuff like that. So you do have that right there. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, these were two little things that kind of leaked out before we even had the embargo uh, lifted. And it's kind of like Sony snuck those two little things out and then it got buried in an avalanche of PSVR reviews. So we don't hear too much about it, but I just wanted to mention them real quick. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's good to hear about that first one because that completely passed me by. So um, yeah, it's good to know know about that um, strange situation. But yeah, yeah. So okay, so now let's get on to the embargo. So the embargo was lifted, and around the internet, all the reviews started bombarding the airwaves, and it's really interesting to see how the reviews are wildly you know, going in different directions. Um, the general take that I got was most of the outlets would, like in Gadget and Wired and, and places like that, they would kind of say, well, you know, the tracking is a little bit iffy, but overall, the overall tone of their review was, this is a great thing. You know, PSVR is going to be huge because this is this low cost item. It's targeting everybody that has a PlayStation 4 and there's like 45 million people out there that have one. Uh, so they look at it as a beautiful thing for VR in general because it's kind of VR for the masses. It's lower cost and it's pretty good. You know, there there are some issues, but it's pretty good. So that was kind of the general vibe out there did you kind of get the same thing absolutely yeah i think most people i mean i watched quite a few reviews on youtube and read a few reviews as well and pretty much the, the general consensus is that it's it's probably on the lower end of the uh, the big three vr in terms of the technology av available to it but it seems like everybody's pretty happy with it overall and there's a few problems that pretty much all the, all the outlets are mentioning and I'm sure we'll get into those as well but I'd say that um, there was a few things that, that, that stood out I mean I don't know if you saw the giant bomb live stream um, yeah now that one man that's where everything goes off the rails it's because you know so we see because I didn't see the giant I saw like I think I saw in gadgets review and then I saw like the verges review and then I saw a couple different reviews and then I saw the giant bomb live stream. So it really shocked me how things went with the giant bomb live stream. I mean, it was the giant bomb live stream was Sony's worst possible nightmare coming true right before. Like, I don't think, 
Oculus or HTC, I mean, not that they're rooting against PSVR. Really, they shouldn't be. We, we all need PSVR to be successful. And, but if you were somebody that hates VR, oh my God, happy birthday to you. Because this Giant Bomb live stream was about the worst possible scenario. It was, yeah, always in the, the uh, while it was all going on. And, you know, they've got the chat room going on at the same time as well. And just reading some of the comments in there, it wasn't pleasant as a fan of VR. It wasn't pleasant to read all that going on because there was a lot of people that were saying the same old things, you know, VR is dead, long, uh, RIP VR and, and these kind of things. And I've got to be honest, when I'm watching it, it was it was almost embarrassing watching that because... I don't know if you watch when Giant Bomb did the live streams of the Oculus uh, Rift launch and the HTC Vive launch, but they had this uh, sort of situation where they were trying all these things and they were generally impressed with it, but they've just got this sort of laid back manner, which seems to be like they're not bothered. They just can't really be doing with any of this VR type <laughs> stuff really. And uh, I know that uh, Jeff Gersman, he's, he's, got an oculus rift in a htc vive and he uses them quite often but um i don't know really if as a whole there's a whole group in a whole organization i don't know how into vr that they really are and it comes across in these live streams that they do that they don't really um i, I don't know may, maybe they they do like vr and they are really into it but their their mannerisms just seem to say that they're bored when they're using it and it, that's no good for for it at all really yeah, you bring up the previous live streams that they did, the Oculus one and the uh, HTC Vive one. And the interesting thing about that is I watched both of those and I watched them live. And, and I remember uh, the Oculus one kind of was, you know, so-so. They went through a bunch of games, but yeah, the overall feeling was kind of not, it wasn't like, oh my God, this is incredible. Everything's amazing. You know, it was kind of a, a little bit of a downer. And then the HTC Vive one, it almost seemed even a little bit worse. And there were certain parts, like this one guy did an edit of it where he edited all the worst things that they said about like HTC Vive and this little video was going around and it had a thumbnail of Jeff Gersman's face with like this big red mark right here. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen that, yeah. it. It's everywhere. And it was really a, a overall bad situation for VR. As somebody that likes Giant Bomb, I listen to their podcast. I think they have one of the best podcasts out there, bar Absolutely, none. Absolutely, yeah. yeah they do. And uh, I respect all their opinions on there, Brad, Jeff, and all the different guys that are on there. But um, yeah, it wasn't a good look for VR. And then what happened here with PSVR, it was like, well, yeah, you kind of remember back to their other live streams. And it's like, I don't know what's going on, but they they have a lot of bad luck, it seems, with VR. Maybe it's the studio, it's, it's reflections, it's lights. I don't know what it is. But when this giant bomb situation happened with PlayStation VR, you literally had people that were like, Oh, I'm canceling my pre-order. You know, I'm canceling my yeah. pre-order. I mean, you would hear people over and over and in the live stream, you heard it in the chat. And then when you went to like Neo gaff or whatever forum you go to anybody that saw that giant bomb live stream, a lot of them were like, I just canceled my pre-order. I just did it. You know, and, and I'm watching all of this stuff live and I'm like, God damn, what's going yeah. on here? Well, you see these um, with that particular live stream. I don't know how many other outlets were doing a live stream like that. That was the only one of that type that I saw. And it, it makes you wonder if, if everybody that was giving it uh, the PSVR um, reasonable to good reviews, if they were having the same problems that Giant Bomb were having, I can't see them giving it that kind of a... a uh, review really because they were having terrible problems i mean it was it was absolutely unbelievable really and you know i know that some of the others like the kind of funny guys they were mentioning um i think it was them actually it might have been tested thinking about it but they were saying how um the headset if you're it can sometimes drift off slightly which um obviously i mean it doesn't really happen on the vive at least to when I've been using it. But what they were saying is you noticed it when you were in an experience or in a game, and then after a while you'd go back to the menu and the menu would be off center. 
and that would indicate that for some reason the headset had drifted off slightly, drifted off center, um, which I guess can happen with that. But if it's not noticeable within the experience, it's not a big deal. But within the giant bomb stream, they were having unbelievable look. And it seemed like um, they were talking about how it looked as if the world was moving constantly uh, um, when they weren't turning their heads and everything was sort of moving in and out. It was something that they, they said as well. I don't know exactly what they mean by that. But um, so, I mean, perhaps they had a defective headset. Um, I'm hoping that was the case, in all honesty. But yeah, it's it's weird because they have two headsets and Brad had one and Jeff had one and they both took them home and they both were playing with them at home and then they also played with them in the office and Jeff was asked by another guy there, you know, did you was there ever a time when everything worked perfectly like when you were at home or was there ever a time and he was like, no, there was never a time it worked right. Now, Brad, Brad, on the other hand, said there was a time when he was playing Batman and it did work right and everything worked fine, but it was short lived. It only happened like one time and the rest of the time. And they also said, look, we turned off the lights. We moved back. We moved forward. You know, they they went through a lot of uh different things to try to uh, remedy the situation. And uh, <clears throat> one thing I'll mention real quick is sometimes I will be playing a Vive game and I'll be in the Vive game and the world, like the actual world that you're in, will start almost morphing in and out. You know, like, like there will be a wall right next to me and the wall is kind of zzzz. And whenever that happens, I have to just take the headset off because it will give you a headache. It's extremely rare. Hardly ever happens. But every once in a while, I'll be in some game and I get this sensation where the entire VR world that I'm in is kind of pulsating, almost like oh, a really? heartbeat. It's, it's like pulsating. And when I was watching the Giant Bomb live stream, they kind of... Uh, they kind of mentioned that it was it was like like the whole world was kind of pulsating and you can't play like that i mean if you try to force yourself to play like that you will end up with straight up motion sickness it is not a good thing and so i wonder if because it's one thing to have a problem um tracking you know one of these things it's it's one thing to have a problem with this where it's drifting a little bit but if you have a problem with your headset that is going to seriously make you sick, you know? And so yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I don't know if you saw the uh, test of review as well, but they were saying, I mean, I think with PSVR, everybody is saying that the tracking system is just not as good as the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. I think that was expected and everybody is happy with that, really. So it's a lower price system. So you've got to expect some kind of sacrifice and they're using technology that they've already got around the PlayStation uh, move controllers, uh, things that they've now applying to VR, which may have been the plan for quite a while. But um, yeah, it's it, it doesn't seem like um, the, the the tracking mechanism is is ideal, but. When I use PlayStation VR, I had absolutely no problem at all with the headset. I mean, granted, I was only using it for sort of 15 minutes at, at the most, I think it was. So, but it was perfect tracking on the headset. There was nothing wrong at all. But the move controllers, and this is what sort of the kind of funny guys and tested really is what they, they were saying. They, they were saying that the, the tracking on the move controllers gives more of an approximation of hand position rather than actual one-to-one -one hand position as we used to on the Vive and I guess Oculus Touch as well. Um, because they're using a single point, they're using that light on the end of the move controller to track the position in 3D space and then using other sensors within the move controller to, up, to track orientation, which, um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it doesn't work in the same way as the Vive and it's just not as accurate. So I was kind of expecting that, but what I wasn't expecting is tracking issues so much with the headset because I'm sure they put a lot of time into getting that right. So it was a bit of a surprise to see this, uh, these problems on Giant Bomb. I did hear a report that Eurogamer got a bad headset 
and they had a ton of problems with it and they actually had it exchanged and the other headset they got, everything was fine. Mm. So there could be a situation where there could be a small percentage of bad headsets that go out there. Now, the downside with that is, you know, Giant Bomb has two headsets and both of them are bad. You know, that's kind of, yeah. eh. and then I don't know if you heard this other little tidbit of news that recently came out. Now, this is here in the USA, but Best Buy sent out an email to everybody that pre-ordered the PSVR. And the email basically said that we're they were altering their return policy for PSVR where if you open it up, you can't return it. Um, so it was like, oh man, is everything falling apart? You know, what's <laughs> like, are they starting to panic? You know, what's going on here? So that was weird. But um, one other thing I want to mention. Okay, so myself personally, before all of these, all of this information hit, like if you go back a week, I was super hyped for PSVR and I totally planned on buying a PSVR. Um, I was going to get PS4 Pro because I don't have a PS4 right now. So I was going to try to get PSVR when it launches and then just kind of sit on it and wait for PS4 Pro. Maybe borrow a buddy's uh, PS4 for a weekend or something just to kind of screw around with it. But um, the thing that I saw that really scared the daylights out of me is GameSpot. GameSpot did a little live stream where they had this one guy, he was playing a uh, rush of blood. You know, that one where it's like a roller coaster and it's kind of like a haunted house and you yep. see all this weird stuff. Okay. They had one guy playing that. And in the beginning of him playing it, he's holding two guns. Okay. Like you're standing up and he's holding two guns and on the video, the guns are like this. Yeah. yeah. The, the whole time, the guns are like like shaking constantly. And one of the GameSpot guy, or the guy that was playing, or maybe it was one of the guys that was watching it, there were three of them. One guy was playing, two guys were watching. One of the guys that was watching was like, the guns are shaking a lot, you know. And, and the other guy was like, oh, that's normal. You get used to it. It's not a big deal. And I was like, what? <laughs> you get used to that? Be and then later on in the stream, there was some other game. I don't know what it was. This was like hours later. It was some other kind of horror type thing. I don't know what it was. But the guy had a shotgun. And, and he was holding a shotgun. And the shotgun was shaking. And I can tell you as somebody that owns the Vive, um, when you hold a gun in Brookhaven or you hold a knife or, or whatever game you're playing, it's pretty freaking rock solid. And every once in a while, like if you do have a problem with your tracking, like my one controller that's kind of screwed up, it, it does get a little wobbly and, and stuff and it's irritating. And I can tell you right now, if I buy a PSVR and if I get it home and I'm playing games and every single item I'm holding in my hand is shaking like I'm on heroin or something, I'm not going to be able to deal with that. You know, I, I got to be able to return this damn thing. So I'm, I'm, at, I'm in a situation right now where I don't even know, man. I don't know what I should do because I really want to support PSVR. I believe in VR and I believe that if PSVR what turns out to be a total dud, oh my God, it's going to set us back like two years. But if PSVR is a hit, it's going to set us forward, you know, and it's going to just snowball. You know, it's a snowball effect either way you go. And I really want to support it, but the shaking is like got me scared to death. Yeah, I think we've been maybe a little bit spoiled with the tracking method on the HTC Vive because it is absolutely exceptional. But you pay for that. You you pay a premium for for that level of tracking, and the PlayStation VR has got a lot of things going for it. The tracking is something that it's definitely got a problem with um, coming from the HTC Vive. But, you know, a lot of people that are going to be getting the PlayStation VR, it might be their first VR experience, and they might be perfectly happy with that kind of uh, 
just the slight wobbling of the controllers and things like that. It depends how bad it is, I suppose. I've not used the move controllers in PlayStation VR, so I don't know. But if it's um, to the level that, that it can pass by and people can still be immersed in the experiences, then it will be fine. And, you know, they, they know, people know that this is not the, the premium level VR. As long as it can get to the point where people are happy with it and they can show it off to their friends and show it off to the family and it, it's it's good enough to, to do that. In fact, there was an article, um, a few people have mentioned this on a few podcasts that I listened to, actually, but they were saying that, I think it was written by a guy called uh, Jeremy Parrish. I don't know if you know. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he was saying that Nintendo have a history of doing uh, hardware, which is good enough. It's not exceptional. It's not the cutting edge like the Nintendo Game Boy and things like that. It's it's good enough hardware, and people take to that kind of hardware. And this is the thing that people have been applying, uh, sort of quoting Jeremy Parrish on this, applying it to PlayStation VR. If it can get to the point where it's good enough, which hopefully it is, then people will adopt it and and, and take to it and it, it will take off. And it's not perfect. There, there's no doubt about it. From all the reviews, every single one of the reviews has said that there's, there's issues with tracking, uh, especially with the move controllers. And as long as it doesn't make people sick, I, I mean, I was... I was really excited about the PlayStation VR, but the the giant bomb live stream really uh, it it's it sort of it's sort of depressing to watch in a way, and um, it, it I can understand why you were sort of really in it, up for getting a PlayStation VR, and then when you saw the, uh, that that stream and also something on the GameSpot that you mentioned, how it put you off a little bit because coming from the Vive, when you've got these little issues, these little problems with the controllers where they are glitching out slightly, it does take you out of it. So coming from that to the PlayStation VR might be a, a big problem. But just going back to what I said at the beginning. It's got a lot of good things going for it as well. Aside from the tracking, if you take that out of it just just for now, you've got these games, and I don't know how many um, reviews you've seen of the games that, that are being released because apparently the they, um, outlets are getting their games in waves, so they're getting a set of games, they, they're able to review them, and then they're getting another set over the next uh, few weeks, I guess. And the games in particular for me are where it's got a very strong point because I don't know if you saw like um, the London Heist demo. Everybody's seen this demo who's been following PlayStation VR. So, the thing that stood out to me about that in particular is the fact that the character models are so impressive. And this is something I feel like, it struck me last week actually, this is something that we're really missing on uh, Vive in particular, possibly Oculus as well on the Rift. Um, but things where you can speak to uh, uh, or just interact with another character model that is is so realistic like in the um the london heist demo um it, it can add so much and we really don't have too much content like that which takes advantage of that you've got the thing in the lab where um you're in a wizard's the magician's house i don't know if yeah. you tried that and the thing that stood out to me in that demo, thinking back to it, is the fact that this guy, this huge guy, steps into the room with you and talks to you, and it's it, it makes the experience a hundred times better. And this is the thing: by having all these big developers going into PlayStation VR development, they're going to have all the uh, non-standard assets. They're going to make custom assets for all these games, and make them fantastic looking and and this is a, a good thing um so it's got a lot of things going for it but it's got to get past these small <clears throat> problems as well yeah man my my final it, it was it was a roller coaster ride for me you know over the last couple of days because i was super hyped uh you know with the launch coming up and just the excitement level I'm a habitual early adopter. I I bought PlayStation 1 the day it came out, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. I I'm just that guy, you know. I'm the guy that jumps on these bandwagons and just whatever happens happens. But um it it was a roller coaster ride, but I will say this. I still I I'm going to try to buy PSVR I will try to buy one. What I'm going to do, though, one thing I did learn from this embargo release is that I'm going to go for the one that doesn't include the game or the controllers or anything like that. 
And the reason why is because um, PSVR World or VR Worlds or whatever, you know, the game that comes with London Heist and the yeah. shark thing and all that, the luge and stuff. Um, the reviews for that were kind of, eh, you know, it was like, it was like eh, it's, it's a collection of demos. It, it almost seems to me like all the stuff that we have on the Vive, all the free demos, all the little free experiences, it's almost like we got PSVR Worlds, you know, with all the little free things that we have. But this one, you're going to pay money for. And so I'm thinking, you know what, because I, I do have one move controller. Unfortunately, the battery is dead. And I got to get a new battery for it. But I'm going to try to get another one of these. And I'm going to try to get uh, a PS4 camera. Um, I saw this one guy selling them for like 35 bucks or something. And so I think I'm going to try to go almost piecemeal, you know. And I'm not going to get the PSVR Worlds. And then the other thing, eventually I'm sure I'll get it for dirt cheap when people don't care about it no more. But... um. I'm going to try to buy my PSVR from Costco or Target. Here in the USA, we have a store called Costco. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like this big warehouse chain. Yeah, we the, have them over here as well, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the thing about Costco is they're, they have a very liberal return policy, and, and they really stand by their customers. And so I, I don't want to take advantage of them. You know, I'm not going to buy the PSVR and be throwing it all around my room and then be like, okay, three months later, I'm returning it. Give me all my money back. It was fun to rent it. You know, I, I don't want to do that. That's bad karma. You don't want to do that. But But I really would like to have the peace of mind that, if I get this thing home and I do everything I can to try to get it set up right and I try to have the distance right and I'm, and I'm having problems, you know what? I mean, it is what it is. I might have to let the thing go. Now, I will go out of my way to try to get the thing working right. You know, when I was at Best Buy and I tried Battlezone and then when you were at EGX, did they have a black screen behind you? No, no, not at all. They uh, There was just the... the crowd of people queuing up behind me so no there was nothing behind you when you were playing no no okay because when i played battle zone i think they had a, a thing behind me that was like like a black curtain and I, I was sitting in front and i was playing battle zone and i had my headset but behind me i think they had a so there could be little tricks that you can do to try to get more precise tracking and i'm sure people will figure it out uh, of like, you know, sit exactly this, this far back and make sure your camera is exactly at this height and make sure there isn't a window. It, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but oh, well, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But basically just to close this PSVR discussion, um, I'm still going to try to support it. You know, I, I'm still going to try to support it, but, but I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going into it with, cautious optimism you know what i mean i'm very much i guess one of the good things is about all this is people are not going to go into it thinking it's going to be the best thing in the world they've had their expectations clipped a little bit so that might be kind of good from that standpoint yeah yeah it certainly um because a lot of the the um, the PlayStation VR coverage that we've seen over the last few days, it's been generally positive. I'd say I think most people uh, impressed with it. But then again, they're they're sort of realistically impressed, if you know what I mean. They're 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 sort of saying it's good, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. But you've got to temper your expectations in terms, especially in terms of the tracking and and things like that. But overall, I'm. I think I don't think you're going to regret getting it. At least I hope you won't, because the content could elevate it up to a point where the tracking might not matter so much. And you've got these other experiences that use the Move controller, uh, sorry, the uh, the standard uh, DualShock controller. So you can use that, and if that doesn't necessarily need to be tracked in 3D space, you might find some some kind of things. Like the thing is, I mean, it's not it's not really a room scale in the same way that the HTC Vive is. So it's a different experience and the the games that and experiences that are coming out are going to be uh, measured to fit that that kind of uh, setup really. All righty, well we spent a pretty good amount of time there on PSVR. So 
Um, as you said earlier, this situation that we're in, it's a three horse race. You know, you got HTC and Valve, you've got Sony with PSVR, and then of course we have Facebook and Oculus with the Rift. And there was a huge uh, deal that happened this week with Oculus Connect. I, Thursday, right? I think it was Thursday that it happened. I think so, yeah. And um, I actually happened to watch this. I had a medical appointment that I had to go to that day, and I was um, at home getting ready to go to my medical appointment, and I happened to tune in. I was like, oh, yeah, that Oculus thing. So I actually watched the majority of this, and I was truly impressed by what I saw. I was wondering what, what your feelings were. Yeah, I didn't see any of it live, but I caught all the videos on YouTube as the way that were posted and all the news that was coming out, it was being posted on Reddit as well. I was trying to keep up with all that, but there was, it was impressive. I've got to be honest. I think this was a, a big deal, to be honest. There were certain things that were shown off and certain things that were announced there that uh, looked fantastic, really. Um, I mean, I guess going from the start, just the the smaller things. They they had the uh, the price for the touch controllers, which is pretty much in the ballpark of what most people were expecting. I think there were a few leaks uh, a couple of weeks ago about the uh, the prices, and yeah, one hundred and ninety nine dollars for the uh, touch, and you get an extra sensor in in with that as well. Um, and they were saying, I guess we can move on move on to the point that, that we're saying with this as well to do with the uh, room scale i don't know well i guess you saw all of it anyway but they were talking about you can then purchase a third sensor to get full a, a full room scale experience um so yeah i don't know uh, what your thoughts are on that yeah wasn't it funny when uh they had brendan arib i guess i i always said aribe but they said arib so uh brendan arib was up on stage and then it had this big thing room scale did you see yeah, that? I was, that. Like, I was like, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> there, because I've always, I've said this over and over again, that it was always my impression that Facebook was scared to death of room scale from potential litigation. You know, somebody, I mean, you just never know, you know, because you, you get into a situation where somebody is setting up their VR setup upstairs and maybe they have like a railing that's not, you know, and they have their room scale there and you could get lost in the experience. We've all done it where you end up getting, you bang a wall and you're like, oh my God, how did I get way the hell over here? And it's because you get lost in that experience. And I always thought that Facebook was so scared to death of this because anytime they did a demo, they would have this little rug you know, this little circular or this little square rug that was like four feet by four feet, something like that. And it was like, okay, stand on this rug. And if you step off of the rug, you know, you're kind of out of bounds, so to speak. And so I guess HTC must, uh, you know, the room scale put pressure on them. And so they're like, we have to offer room scale. And so, yeah, they're going to go with this triangular setup where you, you have the three cameras and kind of a triangle formation and the downside of that is that you're going to have usb wires running all over the place but you know it's better than nothing for sure because the biggest worry for us as vive owners is is everything going to be watered down into a 180 degree standing in one spot you know if, if everybody's doing that for psvr and then they're also doing it for oculus it's going to kind of, you know, water it down for us as well. It's, you know, the least common denominator. But yeah, um, going back to the price though, what about the date? Wasn't it like December 6th? Yeah. Which yeah. is, is kind of late. You know, you're, you're, they're missing Black Friday. And then all these games that are touch games, they all have to wait for that. You know, and some of these touch games that aren't exclusive, but they they probably signed a contract with Oculus where they can't release their game on Steam until it's also available on the Oculus store. So on December 6th, it's possible we could have like five or six extra Vive games that all of a sudden show up because now they're allowed 
to show up because they're available on uh, on the Oculus Store, but now they're also available on Steam. And so that date, pretty late date, I was a little bit surprised by that. But um, but I'll tell you what, watching, I mean, we'll get into the the trailers and stuff, but man, I, I want touch. I really do. I wish I I wish they imagine if they made a touch that had sensors all over it. And it was like, you know what? We're going to throw a bone to all the Vive owners out there. And we're going to say, look, if you want to spend 200 bucks and you get these touch controllers that are made for the lighthouse and you can go into the Oculus store and you can sign up for an Oculus account and you can buy games there and you can use your Vive headset as a replacement for the Rift but you have the real touch controllers and everything is dialed in. How freaking awesome would yeah. that be? I mean, I know there's a lot of vibe people that don't want anything to do with Oculus, but for me, man, I just want to play some good VR games. I don't give a damn. You no, know? I think the uh, the touch controllers do look really, really good. I've, I've got to say. And the thing is the technology that, that's, powering those in terms of uh, the tracking that they use and it's so radically different to the lighthouses but what the point you make is not beyond the realms of possibility because you know that the uh, valve are licensing uh, all these these sensors you're allowed to develop third-party peripherals for uh, steam vr so it's not beyond the realms of possibility that oculus could sort of make it a lighthouse version if they could fit it within that form factor um, i doubt that will ever happen but you know it's, it's not impossible um but yeah we'll i mean we'll get into some of the, the games later the, some of the trailers that we saw but there were some fantastic looking uh, trailers uh, on that on the oculus connect um but f before we get into that i don't know if you want to talk about the uh, the social vr that um mark zuckerberg was on stage talking about yeah the avatars um yeah it's you know, I'm not huge into the social thing. Like for me, when, when I play video games, it's like I just kind of want to go in there and, and play a game and get absorbed in the world. And I'll play Rec Room. And, you know, there's other people in there and you get to talk to them and stuff. And it is fun. It's fun when you're talking to other people and you kind of have a, a community feeling and there's a camaraderie and everybody's kind of cool to each other. I mean, every once in a while you'll get one of these crazy people in Rec Room that just shout obscenities. I don't know if you, there was this one guy, every time I was in Rec Room, he would just say like this thing over and over and over again. Um, but you know, yes. that stuff happens, but, um, looking at their avatar stuff, it's pretty freaking cool. I got to admit, you know, I gotta, you gotta give credit where credit is due. And I really believe, I mean, if the avatars really look the way that they looked and move around in the way that they move, how are they doing the expressions? I have no idea how they're doing that, but yeah, yeah there, there was a couple of things. I, I didn't actually watch this um, entirely, this section. I saw a few videos on it, but the first thing that was announced was this social VR, which which the avatars look like they're more sort of car, cartoony and more fully fully formed, more fully rendered. But then you've got the, the Oculus avatar system, which seems to work within games, which you can then design the, the avatar, and then it displays in things like, I think they were showing it off in things like uh, Pool Nation VR or the, the equivalent, whatever it's being called on Oculus. Um, but but with the social VR, what you say there about the expressions, I've got no idea. Did they even go into that, how, how they were doing that? Or is it just sort of the based on sounds or some kind of uh, button press or something like that on the controller, do you know? I have no idea. They didn't say anything about it, but they did. I mean, they had a, a little demo where they had these two guys and he was kind of making like a surprised face, uh, an excited yeah. face. And, and then they did the whole thing like, okay, let's go to a rainforest and let's go to Facebook's offices and, you know, all this different stuff. And if that stuff really works that good, and is that seamless? Like they went to the bottom of the ocean and it was like a 360 video plane and stuff like that. That's pretty freaking cool. I mean, oh, I, absolutely. Yeah. It's a huge advantage for them because if HTC, well, I, I don't expect HTC to do it, but if, if valve doesn't do something like this, um, that is an advantage for Facebook because people do like the community thing. They kind of, I, 
we remember back to the Nintendo Wii, you know, when you had your little Miis and then Xbox did their avatars. And I mean, we're not into it as much anymore, but when you go into a VR setting, that is kind of cool to have that as an option. And it looks like it's really well done. Now, I don't know if they said when this is actually going to be. see all of this stuff that we heard on Oculus Connect is like, when is all this stuff actually going to happen? Because they kind of said, well, oh, it's coming to gear in a, in a couple months and then later to Rift. And so it's like, is it going to be like eight months later, you know? Yeah, yeah. It did look really, really interesting, though. And and the social aspect of VR is something that I'm getting more and more into. The more kind of uh, games like Pool Nation VR, or even like the table tennis games or Rec Room, like, like you mentioned before, the more I play those, the more I can understand why uh, people get drawn into them. Because VR, it is, I've mentioned it before, it's just so isolating just being in there. And when I first got, got the uh, HTC Vive, I thought all I wanted to do, all I was interested in was uh, sort of single player type games and experiences where I could just get immersed in, in this world. And that, I still do like that to, to a certain extent. But the more I play these social games, the more I can understand them. And I think, um, yeah, social VR and the avatars and all of this looks fantastic. And I hope that all of this that this was announced at the Oculus Connect can sort of push a little bit of competition coming from the other way, like Valve. Because I don't know about you, but some people are getting the impression like Valve, especially sort of resting on the laurels to a certain extent because they've not got the pressure of selling the hardware necessarily. They're, they're laughing. I mean, they've developed, they've developed all of this technology that they've then licensed to HTC who are uh, making their headsets. HTC are under a lot of pressure to sell these headsets to make a profit. Valve, on the other hand, they can sell their games through their Steam store to HTC Vive, to, through the to the HTC Vive customers or to the Oculus customers, so I hope and there might be something being announced soon. Who knows? But that Valve really give it a big push for VR. I know I know it's not fair to say that because they are they are advertising it on their Steam page. But I just hope that all these announcements at Oculus Connect can sort of push Valve to make it more apparent to people that that they're fully behind VR and they do believe in it. Yeah, one of the interesting things I noticed was right after all this Oculus Connect, right after all this announcements hit, if you went to the Vive subreddit, there were a lot of threads, you know, that really blew up like, come on, HTC, what are you doing? And, and like other people were saying like, I'm kind of getting irritated that we're not getting any big budget, you know, blah, blah, blah. You saw all these different yeah. threads and the first thing that popped into my head is that you guys are in for a rude awakening because I'm sorry, um, HTC does not have this money, okay? They just don't. And then Valve, like you're saying, Valve doesn't really have a horse in this race. Valve just wants to continue to sell games to everybody. That's all they care about. The only thing that Valve cares about is they don't want someone else's walled garden becoming the de facto walled garden. As long as that doesn't happen, they're perfectly, they don't care if it's Samsung, Val, uh, you know, Oculus, whoever, they don't give a damn as long as they can keep selling you games and, and that their little walled garden still matters. And all these Vive owners out there, it's funny how I, you see these threads all the time. I know you've seen it where it's like, okay, Valve, where's the new game? But for me personally, I'm not, ex, I'm not actually expecting a big Valve game. I'm just not. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, if, if something like that happened, that would be wonderful. But if you're expecting that, you're probably going to come away really disappointed. Yeah, they've not really got, like you say, they've not really got any reason to do that at this stage. I mean, look into the future. If they can, unless they can release a game that is so compelling that it brings everybody over to the Steam VR side, they've not really got any any incentive to do that. They've got, they can sell games to Oculus, they can sell games to the HTC Vive customers. 
it, it doesn't matter to them if but at the same time you know they, they do seem to be passionate about VR to a certain extent because they you know they developed all this technology all, all the all the sensor technology and everything like that they 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 took their own money out, out, out of their business to set aside to, to experiment with all this so you know there's got to be a, a lot of people in there that are passionate about VR and but I, you know I'm, I'm on on board with what you're saying really I don't think that we're going to get Half-Life 3 VR only for the HTC Vive or anything like that it's just it, it, they've not got enough of an incentive to put that amount of money into one game just for one VR system. Um, yeah, one. Uh, there was that one report a while back where Valve said one third of their company is working on VR. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I did so, see that. I mean, there is a possibility. I, I could potentially see this where Gabe Newell is like, you know what, let's make one legit VR game internally and they could be working on that and so that might be why one third of their company is working on VR because a good portion of people are working on maybe one big VR game I don't think it's going to be Half-Life 3 but something you know one big game so I, I'm maybe but going back to Oculus Connect one of the things that was super interesting to me I need to find another word besides interesting. I say that freaking word all the time. But one thing that was cool for me was, do you remember when Mark Zuckerberg was on stage and it said 250 million plus 250 million? You know, it's like we've already yeah. put 250 million in. We're putting another 250 million in. The thing that you have to understand about Facebook and Oculus Facebook paid $2 billion for Oculus, but that wasn't it. They spent probably another billion doing research and development. All the people they hired, they got hundreds and hundreds of employees, some of them that they're paying crazy money because they hired them away from uh, other places like headhunting. Like you have to offer people a ton of money to get them to leave, and they did that. They're... They, Facebook could be already $5 billion into VR. I, I mean, they could easily have already sunk almost $5 billion. Uh, you know, when you consider the Oculus purchase, when you consider the development of the touch controllers, the development of the Rift, and all the people they've hired, the infrastructure, and then the $250 million they've already spent, and then another $250 million. And so... If you own an Oculus Rift, one of the things that you can be very happy about is you have a company behind you that is, they're pot committed. You know, like when you play poker and you have a lot of money in the pot and you've got so much money in the pot that you just have to keep going. You know, you, you have to stay in the game because if you fold now, all that money gets flushed down the toilet. So you're pot committed and Facebook is their pot committed to the tune of like five billion. And so they if they were to just give up on this now, the investors would be like, this was a freaking horror story. You know, so they're they're sticking with it and money talks and bullshit walks, man. And that money will buy you some stuff. And we saw the trailers and we saw where some of that money is going. You know? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. There's some fantastic trailers. Before we just get into the uh, the games, I just wanted to quickly mention because one of the big things for me uh, that came out of this is the fact that they're using this uh, asynchronous space warp technology that within the, you know, because they've used this time warp thing, which you know, on on the HTC Vive and Steam VR, we've got this reprojection, which is basically cutting halving the frame when there's too much load on the gpu it halves the uh, frames to 45 frames per second and then reprojects them twice in effect and it's not a perfect solution and it's easy to pick up on when things are being reprojected because you get this slight blurring effect and for example like on a racing game if you were to look to your side you'd see the trees and things blurring as they were going past you and it's not something that was designed to be in the game it's just a, a an artifact of this reprojection 
but with the time warp of the oculus that they've had since launch really um it it if the uh, an individual frame can't be rendered in time, it just predicts what that frame should be displaying based on the rotational head movement of the of the where of the Oculus Rift. But this asynchronous space warp is something that, that was actually pretty exciting because what they're doing now is instead of just having rotational head movement, they've got this positional uh, movement to help predict these frames. And in effect, what that does is you can, they're so confident in it that you can now have a, they can run games in almost permanent 45 frames per second and fill in the blank frames uh, with just this uh, estimation of what the frame should be showing based on both rotation of the headset and the position in 3D space of where the headset is. So, you know, this is a big thing for the, the minimum specs. And I'd love to, I'd really like to have a go on uh, an Oculus Rift to try this asynchronous space walk, just to try, see if it really is that good. If, they, if they're that confident in it, that they're willing to lower the, the minimum specs of a PC. So it doesn't have to produce 90 frames per second. It can only do half those frames and then make up, it's almost like fake frames in between, <laughs> really. Um, the uh, just estimations of what the frame should be showing but it's it's close enough that people probably won't even notice and i'm hoping that's the case because if we could get some kind of technology like that into vr and bring all these minimum specs right down because you know you've got the playstation vr which has lowered the price of virtual reality quite quite heavily and with the oculus announcing this if it works as well as they're saying which i hope it does then they've, they've lowered the prices again event the point of entry is much lower yeah they they announced that there's a 499 dollar pc now that they've worked together with the async, uh, the space warp or whatever blast processing of the year 2016. <laughs> if we remember blast processing yeah. way back on the Sega Genesis, whenever I hear these weird terms, I always kind of wonder, you know, how much of this is reality and then how much of this is marketing bullshit. But I mean, if they're going to say, look, you can buy this $499 PC and I think uh, a GTX 960 was kind of like their their men spec uh, GPU, and then the CPU was like a i3 Intel i3. If that's really true, that's really cool because for those of us that maybe have a little bit higher end PCs, maybe we can run our games. You know, I mean, some of those games they showed looked graphically intense, and so if those games can run better uh, because they're taking advantage of these fallback uh, insurances basically for the frame rate and all of that, that would be awesome. And, and of course on Reddit, of course, in the Vive subreddit, you also have these threads. Okay, Valve, where's your space warp? You know, everybody's going to do that. Now, one thing I will say is Valve, I actually expect them to figure this out. I really do. This is some. This is one of the things that they probably saw in this conference where they're like, "Okay, we need to work on that." Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the the PlayStation VR actually it uses something very similar to this. It's almost. I mean, from my understanding, it's almost an identical thing that is in the PlayStation VR because they can uh, render a game at sixty frames per second, and then the headset will reproject. It's not. I don't want to use that word, but it's reprojected to one hundred and twenty hertz. So they're filling in exactly the same as this uh, asynchronous space warp. They're, they're, they're filling in all those blank frames in between. Every other frame is a frame that's just being interpreted based on the last frame and the detection of, of what, what the headset has done since then. So it's almost like it's just sort of bending the frame to fill in the blanks. And it's so if, if those two companies are both using similar technology, and it does seem like... I understand what, what you're saying about how, how much of this is reality and how much of it is just sort of marketing bullshit. It's difficult to say, really. But th th from the way they explained it, it does seem like it could it could work. Um, and, you know, it, it will live and die by the results it gets on these lower-end PCs. Um, when does all of this stuff happen, though? It's like, okay, you can make all these great announcements, but when do they actually happen? You know, so it's like... 
I mean, maybe they they mentioned it, but I, I don't remember off the top of my head. But you you always hear all these great announcements, but then it's like, okay, what day is this actually going to happen so we can see if this is actually true? But hey, I'm I'm hopeful. You know, uh, it's great for everybody if we can lower the cost of entry at, for a high quality VR experience. Yeah, yeah, I think it, with that one in particular, the um, some people were mentioning about how the uh, asynchronous spacewalk can actually be activated manually now um so you can sort of give it give it a try if you follow a certain set of rules you have to actually edit the registry in the computer and, and things like that so it's hmm. not straightforward but people i think there are a couple of videos of people on uh, youtube that have tried this already so um I mean, time will tell how good it is. And, you know, with Steam VR, reprojection is a solution that is as basic as you can really get from my understanding. But it works well enough for now. And like you say, I'm sure Valve will, will jump on board with some kind of similar technology. It, it might be – there might be other things at play here as well as to why they've, they've not done that. Or I think, actually, I, I read something on uh, Reddit saying – a, a quote from somebody at Valve who was saying that they don't want to lower it down to the point where 45 frames per second becomes acceptable. They want to constantly push for 90 frames per second because if you allow this uh, 45 frames per second thing become the norm, then people will just be bringing out more and more graphics and you know you'll then be pushing up the, the, the specs again of the pc so uh, i guess you, you never know what to believe really but that that's just something worth mentioning yeah it i mean it sounds cool i, I can't wait to see all this stuff yeah yeah um i just i don't know if you just want to talk quickly about a couple of the uh trailers that we saw at the oculus connect as well yeah, I, well, there were three games that really stood out to me. The The one that blew me away the most, and I don't know if it was the same for you, but Epic Games had a game called Robot Recall, maybe? Was it Robot Recall? Ro Robo Recall, I think it Robo is. Robo Recall. Yeah. yeah. Okay, when I was watching this trailer, um, you know how you'll see a trailer for a movie or you'll see a trailer for a game and it just hits you in that perfect way. And, and you almost get like a tingly sensation. You almost get like goosebumps. And you're like, you're like, oh my God, this is this is exactly the type of thing I've been looking for. And dude, that trailer was just so awesome. Th there was comedy, um, the voice of the robots, the little things they were saying, and just it's so arcade like i mean it's a straight up it's almost like an arcade game from like 96 mixed with vr and it, it looks kind of like a wave shooter basically but you got these huge giant skyscrapers and we're talking about epic games epic games knows how to use their own engine you know what i mean and you know that 250 million that we were talking about I guarantee you this is this is a piece of it. You know, this is a piece of it because this game, they said it's going to be free to yeah, everybody that, that yeah. it's going to be free. So maybe they'll have like little microtransactions and stuff to try to make some extra money off of it. But I'm kind of guessing Oculus went to Epic and said, look, you know, here's 50 mil, you know, here's 50 mil, deliver us something that will blow people the hell away. And it's like, you know, in the showdown, uh, like you grab the bullet in, in midair and you throw it back. Yeah. I mean, just dude, what did you think when you saw that trailer? Yeah, it does look, uh, it reminded me a little bit of actually another game that I'm going to mention here reminded me in different ways of, uh, raw data because this Robo Recall looked a little bit like raw data sort of ramped up beyond belief. It was just absolutely crazy what you could do because you can actually disassemble all these robots in front of you. You, you can grab different parts and rip them apart and throw them up in the air and then shoot them while they're in the air. And this has actually come from the, um, I don't know if you know, it came from the bullet train demo that Epic Games, I think this is the one that came from that. They, they've just sort of taken what they did in that and then expanded it and made this full game out of it. And I couldn't believe it when they were said they were going to be doing this for free. Um, and like I say, it might have microtransactions and things like that in. But yeah, it looked, uh, the production values on this just looked through the roof, really. Yeah, it, it really looked awesome. And it was one of those, 
I saw that video and then I started thinking, oh my God, am I going to have to buy another freaking headset? Because <laughs> I know that Oculus Touch, you know, Revive is going to figure out some kind of way to kind of map things to the controller, but but it's just not going to be, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's just not. You're going to get maybe 80% of the experience if we're lucky. And man, I saw that and I was like, damn, Facebook, this money is starting to really, I mean, money talks, bullshit walks and robo recall is a perfect or yeah, robo recall yeah. is a perfect example of that. But there were two other videos that, uh, two other trailers I saw. One of them was by Ready at Dawn, Lone yep. Echo. Um, that one looks super cool. And then um, we, if you want to talk about Lone Echo, but the other one I want to mention is Attica 1 or something like that by A4. Do you remember? Yeah, I didn't see that one, actually. Just just briefly on Lone Echo. Um, okay. But, yeah, the, the Ready at Dawn um, people who made, made this, and, yeah, it, it does look absolutely fantastic they, they tested guys um norm was banging on about how fantastic this was this was sort of game of the show uh, for those guys and it looked it did look really really good and and again something on this production values again is um a point i want to make about the character models because so realistic unbelievable you don't see character models like that in, in virtual reality games very often and in, in that trailer you really did see some fantastic graphics and it all helps with immersion so uh they shouldn't be dismissed really the these uh character models and the amount of effort that these these guys have put into making the game look good but uh no i didn't hear about that other game why don't you tell us about that oh man okay i don't un unfortunately i was going to try to take notes and have everything you know listed out and everything but i i ran out of time but there was a game it was like attica one or something like that it was something like that and it's by a company i believe they're called a4 or 4a or something like that and this trailer you wanted to oh it's made by the people that made metro 2033 you know oh, okay like yeah metro last light and that stuff um but the trailer for this one Oh, dude, you want to talk about graphics? The graphics in this trailer were beyond, beyond. I mean, it showed like a table, right? And it showed the guy's hand like picking up a gun and putting little pieces. I mean, it looked like real life. I was like, oh my God. I mean, if it, if it really looks anything like that, wow that shit i mean that like that game if it really looks like that i might have to somehow get my hands on a on a riff somehow because oh go, you've got to see that trailer i i like the robo recall the one because it was just it was hilarious the graphics were great it just had such a good feel to it it was it was just so cool but but pure graphical power like for me i love I love being immersed in a world where you just forget about everything, you know, and you're just, you're in that world and you just get so lost in it and you really feel like you're there and you feel like you're in a major action movie, like a sci-fi thriller. And that's exactly what this looked like and the guns and everything they were picking up and the touch, you know, being able to do your finger and all, it was doing yeah. all that stuff. Oh man. Yeah, that's something that that does look really uh, good. All this uh, gesture control on the touch controllers as well it does look uh, like I well, I'd, I'd I'd love to have a go on a Rift with touch controllers. And you know, I think a lot of people are. It's made the Oculus Rift a lot more compelling now that that they're showing off all this uh, stuff with the touch controllers. It's definitely making people think about it twice now, rather than you know it. Uh, I'm I'm a, a fan of the Oculus Rift as well. I've got to say I, I've tried the DK2, and at that point I was all for just uh, an Oculus. That's that's really all I wanted. But you know, boom scale, it's it's something on the next level for me. And now Oculus are getting on board with that and uh, bringing out all these fantastic looking games and all these hopefully really immersive experiences as well. Then overall, even if they've got this walled garden thing overall hopefully it will still be a benefit to us all 
everybody's got a walled garden you know steam is a wall i mean why is why is steam not a walled garden it's a walled garden it's just a walled garden that people like you know so mm -hmm. it's like i don't know they're, they're all walled gardens what they want you this is what every company wants you know what they want they know that if you're in their ecosystem and if you start buying digital games and then you have a library of digital games it's very hard for you to then switch over to company B because you've already sunk all this money and you have all these games. It's why everybody wants everything on Steam because they've already sunk a ton of money on Steam and they've already got a ton of games on Steam. And so they want to be able to get everything on Steam because you've bought into that ecosystem. It's the same people with an iPhone and they have a million iTunes songs and they have like little movies and stuff on their iPhone. and you're stuck in that garden. You spent so much money in that garden. You got to stay there. One little funny thing I wanted to mention though, is remember all the Palmer lucky drama that happened like two weeks ago or whatever. And yeah. the day that that happened, there were a lot of people that sold off their Oculus right away. I mean, there were some people that did that. And can you imagine what those people are thinking right now? I mean, I, I don't know if they're sticking to their guns politically or whatever, but but God damn, Oculus just dropped a bomb with all these trailers and yeah. the avatars and everything. Yeah, Oculus is is a big company. It's not all about Palmer Lucky. So I, I, I wouldn't go selling the Oculus Rift just because of, of him, really. <laughs> I wasn't surprised that they didn't have him there, though. I kind of figured, I mean, could you imagine if they called him out on stage? <laughs> like the whole time I was watching that, there's no way. But yeah, no, they told him, you know, Palmer, maybe stay home for this one. <laughs> yeah, I think they locked him in a room somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know if there's any other little things you want to talk about at the moment or uh, if we should call that episode three. Yeah, that's episode three. I just want to say one little thing. Uh, Cyberpong VR for any Vive guys out there, that game got dropped to $9.00. And it's a pretty damn good game. I, I, I think it's um, there's a ton of games that are really good with one paddle. And Cyberpong, to me, is the best game with two paddles. If you want a one paddle game, I like Pong Waves VR, Racket NX. But Cyberpong's pretty cool. That dropped to nine bucks. Um, I mean, there's, there's some other little things that happen, but we don't need to get into all that. We did a pretty long show already. So... You know, thanks for everybody. Oh, please subscribe to the channel if you guys could. And if you guys are listening to the audio version of this, if you can maybe take a, a few minutes out, uh, a few minutes of your time to hop onto YouTube and leave a comment in the YouTube comment area for the episode because it's easier for us to see that. And, you know, hey, feedback is a good thing, you know. So uh, we would appreciate the the feedback subscribe if you could and we're still of course like you said we're working on uh having a permanent home for the audio only version of the show and so you'll be able to get the podcast eventually we're working on that so yeah the um actually just during the show i might as well mention this now but uh just got a message from itunes so we should be uh, on itunes shortly hopefully but uh you never know things cool. might Things might still go wrong yet, so don't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thanks for listening anyway, everyone, and uh, we'll, I guess we'll see you next time. All right, take it easy.